So the first piece of our work is really getting in touch with who I am. Uh, who I am as creation source for this planet. My default and fear and getting over that fear. And the next piece that we work on is design. So we want to share with you what I call conscious full spectrum approach because we want to have a way of action and design that sources this creation source, sources our power. So let me take you back to reality as it shows up in everyday life. How do we normally respond to what's not working? We first say that there is a problem and when there's a problem, we want to solve the problem. So this is a space of solving problems. Which, by the way, is 99.9% .9 of every project, initiative, nonprofit is designed inside of this part of the circle. Nothing wrong. It's partial. Our thesis is that this is partial. So we often have a joke and we say, do we really want to engage in projectizers? No, we don't want to engage in projectizers. So people have expertise to solve a problem. And is it needed? Yes. But is this sufficient for long-term change? The answer is no. So there are people who use different techniques, different tools, different methodologies to solve a problem. So right now, if someone's hungry, would you give food? Yes. If someone's ill, would you go and give treatment? Yes. If I'm bleeding, would you give me a band-aid? Of course, I hope so. But is that enough? And we say it isn't. So what do we do next? What we then do, usually, is that we look at the system that in which this problem actually nests. Joss, is this diagram good? It's about the same as what we always end up doing, yeah, I'd say. <laughs> so somehow these two things are usually disconnected. And one of the attempts a, lot, a few organizations do is that they try and design their systems change to affect and solve a problem. So this is a third way of action. If this is one, this is looking at just the systems the patterns that are largely invisible. And then this is a third way of action. But there is another fourth way. And that is there are people and programs that actually look at the space. The circle isn't great. But here we go. We never said we were in the business of circles. <laughs> so this is about the space that Joss spoke of, the source of our creativity. What's unique in this program that we have is that we are, there are other programs that source creativity, but for the work we do, we do source creativity, shift the system, and solve the problem. So if we only source our inner power, which some programs do, we say that's another kind of program. Is it wrong? No, it's partial. And usually when people open up their hearts, they will go and do good things and solve problems. We say, that is another way of acting. Is that wrong? No, no but it's partial. partial. <laughs> so all of this is a partial response. And if we examine the way the world responds to problems, to systemic change, to cultivating our inner self, it's usually one of these five. And if you look at just your own life, you might do business as usual during the week and then on Sundays practice your spirituality. That would be this space of taking away your, your sourcefulness mm -hmm. and doing it separate from everything else that you're doing. So separate and partial could be seen to be in line with each other. So what we want to do here is to say we recognize the importance of these three domains but we want to have architectural skills. So Joss, can you tell us about architecturality as I draw the diagram again? Surely. 
Architecturality is a distinction that we use to describe someone who's able to think from a systemic point of view and design their project in a way that is conscious full spectrum, that is sourced from that deep oneness, that space of possibility, that's that non-dual self space. It is designed to shift a system, to actually create a new pattern, and at the same time it produces results that are consistent with the vision of that project.